<coughs> God, fuck. <coughs> Jesus. I see, I guess I should have expected this. Somebody saw the other guy, right? Huh? Not right, but not. He was there when I took off his overser. Scouts or not? Maggie. They, they come shoe. Are you doing alright? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask me the question, sir. Don't let them get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you? Yes. Better square this case away, got it, pal. Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. <laughs> squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. The bitrate. It's not looking good. My god. I don't know why, what is causing this. I'm sure really got everything under control for everyone's sake. I see. So they think I'm sure. <clears throat> the victim's name was Glenn Ogg. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Strings local com company. This is the victim's autopsy report. Court accepts this in the evidence. Here are the floor plans of the restaurant. Yes, sir. Glenn Elk was listening to the radio at the time. Tim Sain. And, um, it looks like Mrs. Bird might have had, well, some kind of a motive. Classy lady. The facts of this game can be ironclad. It's the right thing to do. Think you're crying. <laughs> Princess, no, it doesn't matter. Supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, the I'm sure. Customers die upon that. They both said there was no other guy. Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured in some way. Ha! A ticket? Looks more like a... ...from the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chair. Table extremely clearly. Yeah, he had a portable radio in his pocket. Tell me about how one of them had it so hard or not. And well, what? Closer to the middle of nowhere, <laughs> is it? Jensen, mm. could you perhaps tell us about the poison top? Rest of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else. So I had to put it in a lemon's terms, I'd say it was. 
The poison could have been a pepper. <laughs> the victim took his coffee black with no sugar. Absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of this, any of his coffee. Huh? What do you mean? In the victim's coffee cup. What proof is there that the victim... <laughs> Should I be grateful for this coffee burnt out? Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, yeah, the victim's cup. Then you could look at the rim. Oh yes, it's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in this cup. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the witness wait waitress brought to him like this. <laughs> the record, the only prints owned the cup were the victims and the dependents. From further investigation on this cup, we find a certain chemical substance. Some cyanide, I've heard of that chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison that you come sure? It's, well, that stuff's little. Eat too much and your history. How much is too much? Little dose is open 2 grams. That's about enough to finish anyone off. 2 grams, how much is that? You know when you swap your ears for your wax? Yeah, about that much. Your wax, huh? Sounds like something I'm just gonna have in a pound of. <laughs> Such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. Some kind of a motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown away out of proportion. <laughs> you know what my golden rule is to you? Check out a bad cup of coffee. You can always get another. <laughs> huh? I don't get it. I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. <laughs> Stick to the facts here. Now then, what, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, come show. She was. They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what he heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket, it was a winning ticket for half a million. Miss Armstrong knew about the ticket too, didn't they? But he stole the wrong one. Then, is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? Should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Wait a minute. The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Ha! I have here in my hand. The very ticket in question. It's half a million dollar, lo dollar lo uh, lottery ticket. One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search of the defendant. What? Oh no. Order, order. She's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. We'll submit the ticket as evidence to the court immediately. I better keep an eye on the ticket. The way that such a voice could <laughs> Oh man. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial too. But it feels heavier now somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, your honor. And that's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelming when clear to me. 
The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems to be unreasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. I like an old man who knows the score. There's also the matter of the half a million dollar, lot dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, what well, sum of money even I might be tempted to bet the rules. <laughs> wow. I know man an old man who is weak to siren call of money. <laughs> Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. More evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. <laughs> that scent looks like... It can't be blood, can it? Ah, it seems the star of our play was a little flustered. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? <laughs> the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee thing isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. <laughs> the pocket? A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide, the very poison used by the killer, was in her apron pocket. A ball of poison in Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were all the only ones on it. What? Order, order, order. The court will accept these items into evidence. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Condot. Why haven't... Uh, why have you not explained the bloodstain to the court? Bloodstain? What bloodstain would that be? Don't play games, Regator. <laughs> the blood-colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous, no one told me anything about a plastic. <laughs> you don't need to be told, just look at it. <laughs> well, did it. <laughs> Could this thing really be blood? <laughs> no way, sir. That's... It's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? She was not good on someone her apron while taking someone their breakfast at day. You have sp... You could have your... <laughs> you could have spoken up a little sooner, dear dick, I'm sure. <laughs> Full of stun like that again, I don't have you drink 70 cups of ketchup, witness. <laughs> uh, I thought everyone knew what it was already. Hmm, I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last. Really, I made in this case. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They have all been clearly established. Well, right? It seems you really are a phony after all. Uh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Scrap for the court, the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. The crime was reported at 2.25pm by a kind of scary old man, sir. Before Maggie had passed out from the shock, it must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identi identification on him, but we figured out who it was pretty quick and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie's was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bowl of poison. But that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hey Otero, what's up? You identified the victim and us. Uh, <laughs> Secured your prime suspect. Very good. Bit right. Can you not fuck up, please? Annoying. Nice time to convince the court you're a real lawyer, right? Don't count on any more cross examinations after this one. So, let the fun begin.
scary old man. Did he come sure? There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Ah, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy is still made a fuss. It took you so long. Then he hurled up abuse at them and seeds. <laughs> hmm, seeds. Ah, just nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. I guess not even the mighty goat can avoid being attacked by that guy. <laughs> The old man was the only one other only other customer in the place at the time. So look at me. What is it? What did you figure out? He took his time finding a payphone apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. So a forward dude didn't get hit. Uh that's inconsistent, I'll just say that. Because I've been hit by the next weapon, I've rolled directly forward toward it. Toward Calamity there, so yeah. How long was the defendant unconscious for? Officers got to the crime scene at around 2.40. I think he was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. We got another 10 minutes or so before she came to. Yeah, fair. But I, I, yeah, I don't think it's consistent though. But if it works for you, then that's nice. Would like to have been on the scene by myself. I would have liked to have carried out the search too. I'd love to see Maggie sleep like that. All pretty and peaceful. <laughs> okay, well, no, that's getting a bit creepy. <laughs> You're a professional detective, I'm sure. Not a professional bird watcher. <laughs> Save the romantics for your own time, detective. All we need to know about is the investigation. Oops, I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? You didn't have any? Are you saying that it was stolen then? No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card in Impala. All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. Four kings. Yeah, four kings is quite something. But like, once you get it down, you have it down pretty much. So that's like a really nice thing. 58 cents. Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. Oh man. <laughs> the victim sounds like he was a totally miserable young man. Or some kind of powerful one. Why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I'm onto something here. Wait a sec. Huh? Did, did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes. Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that's so let down he's got the whole second shoulders and puppy ass thing going. <laughs> there was <coughs> prescription back on the victim's table along with the altar ticket. It seemed Mr. Ed El uh, Glenn Elk visited his doctor before he went to Trebion. The victim's name from the med medical records of the dog who prescribed the meds. Mm -hmm. That's reliable enough, so. That's a reliable enough social report. Should I leave this all on or escape to your wall? So what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag was we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. It's completely empty. Ha. Huh. We're entering an empty paper bag as evidence. Desperate, are you trying? Right? <laughs> it could be important though, so yeah. It, it's kind of like the thing with like the buzzer from the previous chapter where it was like, is there any clues on the buzzer? And then it was like, there is none, and that is a clue in itself. So 
the bag is empty and that's, that, is, uh, that is a clue in itself. Very different than the hammer. So, I mean, yeah, the moves it did is different, but like... You just need to get used to it, I suppose. Like, it's a kind of different playstyle. Because you need to be more precise with your camera and everything. Uh, now what happened with the investigation after that detective? I'll actually check the other... should do it if you're comfortable with it. It's not too bad to do. And it like lets you punish once or twice during the during the time of the of the homing missile. Technically more but it's only safer to do like only really safe to do with like one or two punishes during it. And yeah, hammer is simpler, but it's definitely doable with the halber as well. The defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, is it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah, you've nailed it, pal. Hmm. It happens to me all the time. I made a department party the other day, and I, when I got home, sorry, boss is so Keep up this crazy testimony, Detective Anto. Shoes will end up down your throat. <laughs> wow. Sorry. So, try it. Someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. That's a pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? Um, well, I'd love to if I had any. It appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. Continue with your testimony, witness. So their half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah, interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for. But wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh yeah, the one the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. A lucky guy, huh? <laughs> They're just going to let him get away with it? This is a one dollar detective. So no one cares when it's that little, except for Gumshoe. If I don't find a hole in this testimony, that's just going to hand down his verdict. I'm sure he's not giving us anything to work with. And we can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. Yeah, that's true. My game comes sure are like dumb and dumber. <laughs> Our only <laughs> hope is that they were so dumb they'd be something obvious. Come on, come sure. Be the dumbest you've ever been. <laughs> Can I use this on this? I guess it's no.
Even if your PV is low, it's good still. Is it is always good. Uh, how is this not? Oh, but what? How is it the? Okay, I did. Yeah, I checked the guide, but I'm confused at how this. Uh, am I just misunderstanding something here? Confused, so I can play more Bestos One. Nice. I'm sure. I think I should point something out to you. There's just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally. I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription pack you mentioned was empty. Oh, okay, now... That makes sense. That makes sense. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Um, no. They didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trebian. Where then did the medicine disappear to? You are too cool, pal. <laughs> God, indeed. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? <laughs> I, uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Oh my god, my back hurts. Ah, oh, fuck. Order, order. Tell me to go, that. what do you have to say to that? Ah, huh. that's all. <laughs> what? Read for the court the name of the clinic and the prescri- on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Year or- What all are in logical clinic? I can't pronounce. So, what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? Hardly an illness, your honor. More like a bit of war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Elk found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. Oh shit. He ruptured his eardrum? And what on earth was the prescription he was given? 
There's a cream that has to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. What? It's mentioned in the autopsy report if you read the fine print. Or read. They found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is. In very, very fine print. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Therbion. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would have eaten his medication. Ugh. It seems that this medication is irrelevant to the, fall, to the case after all. No. Nick, if you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. He's right. Well, I can't get away with my, any old weak objection. What should I do? A moment ago, Mr. Goodot made the following statement. Since Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trebian, if that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? The medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it might seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. You know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems like likely that a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that the coffee that waiter served would contain it either. If I did, the possibility is undeniable. Oh. That's enough. It's a good up. Is that the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Sagodot. Um, I, uh, I've got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. So it's the old man who was there in the restaurant of, on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo, the pigeon fighter. <laughs> Very well. The matter of today's appearing medication seems little more than a trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. And that is something that bothers me. Yay, yeah, good job, Nick. Court will adjourn for 10 minute reasons, after which we will hear the prosecution ne as next witness. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last 6 cups. Court is adjourned for reasons. Phew, that was close. Tell me about it. I, I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. Oh, it's my line. I think I really did die a little bit. <laughs> so we all nearly died in there. I can't believe it did come to you. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. But he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job right. It's okay, I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. It's pretty hurt this time. I felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I never want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. The next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lo lover of weight, fresh outfits and projectile seats. <laughs> I bet he's gonna be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old crouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never ending bird scenes. <laughs> Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Godot, your next witness, please. The prosecution calls the lucky old timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? Name an equation, if you don't mind. His name is Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times too. You don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Still have to court your occupation. Occupation. Ah, uh, listen here. How much, co how much call do you think there is for kimono embroidered here? Kimono embroidery? 
That's what I do, or did back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Oh, real craftsmen. They're a dying, they're dying breed. Maybe he could embroider my custom costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So I had to take a job working the cash register at the burger joint, pretending to smile. The burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. <laughs> Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh yes, I was eating some seeds over a cup of yavachino. Seeds? What do you think these are, hmm? I see. <laughs> this is I really that happened, crumbs. Did I? Oh yes. Oh yes I did, I saw it all. And please, tell the court, we're all ears. Sure, sure. I'll tell you, I'll tell you every last detail. It's really getting into this. The young man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a cappuccino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's the serving girl, right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Take it off, she's not the serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Yeah, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these unvangled, uh, newfangled words. What's wrong with old-fashioned ones, huh? Newfangled? Let's talk of radios and glasses. It's wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. Well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross explanation, Mr. Wright. Yes, you're all right. Because I figured that he wouldn't be able to see it if because there's the partitions, but whatever. So you saw the victim then. You saw Mr. Glenel. I want to know if Gutten Brown retained his championship or not. So I was looking at the sports paper that the victim was reading, huh? And at the location in question. There are partitions between tables on the same side of the restaurant, right? So if there are, you say that you could see the victim. That means you were sitting at the table on the other side. On the other side, correct? I got to that place to drink cappuccino. I don't go to sit. I don't remember which table I was sitting at. I mean, you go there to eat the waitress. <laughs> Sekudo, that's a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Sekudo never makes mistakes. I don't... I don't every... I don't every T and cross every I. I see. My eyes, that's fine. The doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping at the white <laughs> I saw what he, the serving girl just put in. He put in the Yavchino as well. I don't know what's coming up, and something tells me I'm not going to like it. Don't know. Need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask that the witness add to what he knows about this to, the dest to his testimony. Hmm. I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. There's no question about it. She very comes to put some white powder in there. Did you really put that into the coffee? 
Help me, boy. She took some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Couldn't you have been adding sugar? Sugar in a small brown bottle like that? Like that? Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? Huh. A bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is. That's the one. It's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. So what did that cube spill in the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Ah. Look, just one zip. Yeah, you waste everything. Those Samachinos cost eight dollars. The good old days we would have drank every last drop, eaten the cup, and then died. Congratulations, <laughs> you earned the title of pettiest man to create a court. That was an immediate death. Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh yes, it's slumped over without so much as a twitch. I felt the Yavachi, you know, I just drank turned sour in my stomach. Oh yes, I know the feeling. The waitress, I presume she is. You said, I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you can identify her by? <laughs> particular feature? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry. You can see all the way up with her, her, you know. <laughs> She's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize about the waiter is her outfit. Damn, one could wear such a, just such an out a uniform, even me. It's right. Please spare the court of any further mental anguish from that image. <laughs> Don't get all excited, Nick. You gotta keep yourself together. <laughs> I guess I got a bit carried away. Yeah, there are other things I recognize about her too. He's pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Sure, you saw waiters take the, uh, take the coffee over to the victim. But that, what matters is whether that wa waiters was Maggie Bird or not. What right? It's a girl. These other features that you recognize about the defendant. I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There was a ribbon in her hair and some, and her apron straps were loose. You do seem to remember several details about her appearance. But what about the most crucial detail of all? Her face. Yeah, as if I don't remember that. The witness noticed the straps of the. Uh, he's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right, I can even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair, it was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. So that uh, he remembers the witness. By the way, he dressed pretty well. I think there's something more to this somehow. <laughs> Mr. Kudo, you seem especially interested in straps. Why is that? What? The ribbon in her hair. The straps on her apron. What's the fascination? The fascination? Objection. People have all kinds of fetishes, right? We don't need to embarrass, embarrass, embarrass the witness. Listen, you young upstarts, I haven't got some sick strap fetish. <laughs> Is there any relevance to the witness' unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? Just curious as to why he was so fixated on the witness and made his strap. I said I haven't got a strap for this. How many times do I have to repeat myself? <laughs> Very well. Continue with your testimony, Mr. Kudo, and make it strapless. <laughs> uh, uh. I think old city really saw Mackie do it. They probably had his eye on the waiters the whole time. That's why he was there. But he was still for cute outfits, right? Not the waiters. I guess. She makes a good point, though. Hey, did I just say something clever? I wonder if the way that Mr. Kurosawa really was my game. That's what we have to figure out, Nick.
I thought that I'll do. Wait, what? Oh. Never mind. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. So what? Possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Objection. Huh. Can you tear cramps? You don't normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. But this wit witness testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment. I tell you I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons. I'm just telling you what I saw. Check it out. The court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observed from the front of studies to your testimony. Sure, sure. But my testimony is getting longer and longer. <laughs> if I can't find a hole in it soon, it will even, it will get even longer, I bet. Check it out. I would like you to please take a look at this. Yeah, that filthy thing would so it feels like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like, just after he's done eating. <laughs> Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. Do you think I'd forget something like as uh, 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 silly as that, hmm? Well, you're half with a cult. <laughs> what? What is it? <laughs> ever since I said you half with a cult, there's been an eerie silence in here. So, Kudo, this apron. It's the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh, and as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means if you had really seen this apron before... Uh, yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waiters from the front. Oops. <laughs> Witness. I guess it's oops your way out of this. <laughs> ah. Well, well. Also, we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, Tread. Here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. I think the defendant is Maggie Bird. Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup. This old guy was watching. I hope I understand the gravity of the situation. It's a good one. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you say or you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You rely on me, Captain. My noggin is in perfect wording order. I don't remember a single occasion when I forgot what Ferger <laughs> for a customer wanted. I can't remember, probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. <laughs> Very well, let's test just how good you are. Your memory and attention. The detail is Mr. Kudo. 
Tell us what you remember about the week. There's another of those pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had the newspaper in his right hand, and the noisy breath kept rustling its pages. The younger man was listening to the wireless, I remember that well. And the serving girl in question caught, brought over the Yavachino. Little Finchet picked up the cup of with his free hand and took a sip. The testimony we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. Seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those you-know-what types who are so vague about everything. How are we going to handle this thing? Only need to do one thing. Just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Does trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but it's what I do best. <laughs> oh man. Wrong. Fuck. God damn it. I'm trying to... I'm trying to get to the... you were told at the start, uh, start of this testimony. This was a way of testing the credibility of your memory. I know, I know, there's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you, nothing. If I get anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. Can you tell us where this is going, right? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand, while drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make that his left. Yeah, what is this? Kin kindergarten? Oop, oh my god. I didn't even mean to. Okay, well. I guess I somehow managed to hold it or something. Uh, that took up the victim use, correct? Yes, and on dream, you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there's a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see. The victim was holding the cup in his right hand. How? Well, Mr. Kudo, this court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeons on. The Kudo. I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to. Wait! If you think I'm going to stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad, you're wrong. Uh, I don't care about the dirty coffee cup, I know what I saw. Do you still insist on your testimony? The young brat was holding the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question, I'm a good law-abiding citizen, I am. It's a dead young hotpot and you, you spiky-haired yahoo. You are, well, worth, worth fault. Me? Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. <laughs> Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Isn't what I've got to say? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but. Sure, why not hear a little more? Mr. Kudo. This is my 16th cup of coffee. So, this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor. The boy was wearing the RPS on the same side as the green lens of his specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before.
before he picked up the cup too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand. But what? But <laughs> now that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his, over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, you know. It was a small computer monitor often used by programmers. Monitor? You mean like a television screen? Inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. ACTV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad, but they don't matter. I know what I saw and I'm telling the truth. It's true. He doesn't seem to be lying. And those are the facts. It's good and... It's good old black and white. Hmm. The victim was wearing an HMD. What does it matter? It's none of them actually, but anyway. And you're sure that he was wearing the airbase on the same side? No question, I could only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. Yeah, that's pretty obvious if you look at the floor plans. I was stable, he'd only have a wheel of the side of the victim's head. He kept an eye on Mr. and Elk. He was getting on my nerves, crossing the newspaper and filling with his earpiece all the time. And then he went and made all the fuss dying from one sip of Java Chino. And to say to him, calm down you young brat. But so at him made me so the speed of my CD thing, I could have choked. So I take it the victim was a walking ball of nervous energy. The earpiece you mentioned, which hand did the victim touch with? with? You're one of those people, aren't you? They're the types that use your left hand to get things out of your right pocket. Or fastens your left cuff with your right hand. And when the tour guide says on your right side, you'll see a famous blah blah blah. You're only one who deliberately looks left. Well, aren't you? No, I didn't mean. Obviously, he used the hand on the same side of his body that the earpiece was in. Ow, ow. So if he had the HMD on his left side, then it was his left hand, I guess. You seem very sure of yourself, Mr. Kudo. It's because I know what I saw, no matter what tricks you try to play on me. He really did see the guy pick up, picking the cup up with his left hand. To this end. Well, Nick, what do you think? I think the guy's telling the truth. Even so, and it's not quite right. Chuck evidence. Then Chuck evidence that he's not all breaks. If he's not lying, there wouldn't be any contradictions in his testimony, right? <laughs> Do I just present the cup again?
I don't get how this actually makes sense, but okay. I might just this dumb right now. I'm sure what the relevance of this is, but... It's a crow. There's something very strange about the observation of the victim. What? You say he was swearing to earpiece on the same side as the HMG. Question. You can look me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear out without a doubt. Oh wait, did this... No, it doesn't happen. It does. He would only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. What did you say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudal. The victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Oh, okay, now that makes sense. I... Fuck me. <laughs> Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right, it's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear. Because he couldn't even hear it that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. P-P-P-Pigeon! Pretty pigeon! Man! Order, order, order! Sweeney's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind. And he claims the victim was swearing at near peace when he knows when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Kudot? <sighs> A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man, it's my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? It is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim was clearly shows the victim picked it up with his right hand. I never back down, I know I'm right. No, I drank his uh, habaccino with his left hand. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly, the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Impossible. Witness has already testified on numerous occasions. The victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Which hand the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant to your honor. The fact is that with one hand or, or the other, Mr. Egg drank the poisoned coffee. Like this. Tell him, Mr. Kodot, that doesn't wash. Wash. The point of this. Testimony was to establish whether the witness memory is credible. The results are clear. 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 The testimony given by this witness is useless. <sighs> I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court. But to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Do you have to be so frank? Take that you pompous old 
I'm sorry, Mr. Crow. You can't reach me from there. <laughs> I'm more in the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case, but uh, that's all for now. This code is short. Wait! If you stop now, where does that leave me? The view, Mr. Crow. I'm just close with the young upside over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even tilt his teeth or cross his eyes now. <laughs> How is your bad memory my fault? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Crow, but there's nothing I can do. I've kept my mouth shut until now. There's something else the court should know. <laughs> what? <laughs> there's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. But I want another chance. I want another crack at you, <laughs> you young shock. Me, he's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. <laughs> well, everyone, what do you say? The one final showdown, the final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook. Sorry, cramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the cappuccino you want if you come to my house after the trial. Maybe, maybe 16 years old, but Victor Cruz is still a man. That's not witness. I believe it will be quicker for the code to hear your testimony. <laughs> you bet, which much much quicker. I believe this is happening. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, you better get ready, youngster. I need a big hit. Just quit throwing those seats at me, would you? Let's get up. Using some sort of infinite ammo code with that box of seats. <laughs> First of all, I want to stress that this might be nothing, I'm not too sure of myself. The young man stumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of the, his cappuccino. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down. I remember it perfectly. Don't skip the viewing, there's a question hanging on everyone. Very well, Mr. Writer. Photograph of the crime scene. What's your tongue, granddad? I'm not going to no grant of how is it now? I just remembered something. Yes. Some ways. Haha. <laughs> My table. <laughs> what? It's all when it's young man young lad. Ha <laughs> ha yes, it was on my table. That's how my... <laughs> God damn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kudo. You said... Reflect on yourself. Wait, wait a minute. You said something else. There's more. I've got more to say. Oh yeah, something else. Wait, if... Let's cut the witness out of the... Sidetrack. I'm still not in a that the victim supposed to drank from with his left hand to here. Yes, you are. There's one more thing before I can call today's system to an end. One more thing, you are. Consistent that his testimony should be huh? Yeah, I would Where about? Here in the cure I broke the base at my seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your old apology. What the heck are we supposed to be with three coffees? Discord is adjourned.
How do you think the trail went this morning? There's nothing to help us. There's always the cafe. Talk about a terrifying case of contradictions. I guess we should try to put Mr. Guru's testimony to some sort of use. Hold on, let's go back there and check it out again. Oh, anything on your mind about Xenop? You know, like what he's like and stuff. Actually, I've learned something about my doppelganger. Huh? You did? What did you find out? What's going on? It feels different in here somehow. You think? Yeah, be on edge. What are you doing? Calling the officer for the briefing. Painful. Isn't princess? Save for later. I'm turning it off now. Busy, more like panicking. If you ask me, something's going on. Something. Even big pockets can have. <laughs> you know, so kind of drum is trying to prevent. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to write her a real letter instead of an email. Well, not until the. Last night. Oh, what an awesome joke. Maybe I should send in my receiver. Maggie, Maggie, keep it down, man. He's in the playground. Yeah, and it's on time too. That's it. Come on, come on. It would have only netted me five bucks anyway. What a ripoff. Huh? Oh, it's you. Haha. <laughs> they drove her into a corner, you know. The one blow apart my testimony. Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. Well, it's bad. That's it. It is bad. Uh, it's kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you paid 20 bucks for it, you know? Maybe you should have found out about the price after he had finished eating. <laughs> I 
actually, maybe that's why Glenel came here. We he heard about the super fierce twin teas and if I pierce him, you pierce some. Speaking of uh, like that reminds me. It's still hard to know anything about the guy. Aren't we as silly to come show what he knows, seeing as he's here? So what were you all excited about earlier? Huh? That's right. You said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh that. That was nothing. Uh, I wasn't excited. Come on, did I come shoot? You can tell a little on me. So, uh, what were you listening to? Nothing really. It was just the, um, the exercise show. What the? Cyclock? Haha, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> it's not special, so it's sure it's great. <laughs> then why are there tears in your eyes? Can I do that yet? Yes, I can. Alright, yeah, here comes you. Tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you made a big thing about it, I'm not gonna tell you. Say about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to... I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glen Elk did. It. It's like you can see right through me. Huh? I've cracked him already. <laughs> see, pal, that's why I said it was nothing. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. It's with, ev it's with everyone and the lottery. So, how did it go? I won 50 cents. It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lot of buck. I was, it was, uh, I was so mad. Yeah, I know the feeling. I thought the same kind of ticket. I want the same kind of ticket as Mr. Alex C. But they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal. I bet that's what Mr. Alex was designed to on the day he was killed. Yeah, what time is it now? Uh, it's. This is one after 1.30. And our the results always broadcast at the same time. Yeah, look, I got this flyer when I brought, bought the tickets. Yeah, radio. Sounds cool. Want to try it, Nick? And buy a ticket, Maya, with your own money. Apparently everyone's listening to the show now. Just because everyone wants money. They said the victim, Glenn Elk, was really into gambling. Yep, you can't beat gambling, I love it too. I won 500 dollars as I'm playing cards with me. Huh? You were playing for money? Of course, so you better pay up. <laughs> You're a smart one, waiting for a cop to be present before asking for the cash. <laughs> wow, okay. Huh? So I'm just talking to someone. I'll be back next month. Oh yeah, natural element. I will be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid I might get a little hot around here. It might be a little hot around here. This was the waitress, right? Probably. From the... Wait. The last... I... That... Partially makes sense. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. I will have everything ready, I promise. I love fire, you know. Hee <laughs> hee hee. I love the weight crackles. Hey. No, no, no. Just stop it. I beg you. And don't let me down. I'll be watching you. 
Why is not this is not necessary, you can trust me but I myself. Talk to anyone and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh no, you don't have to worry. You know you worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax it's a well of of sandalwood. I do love raw meat from time to time. He 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 Uh be taking my leave. Goodbye. For now. What the heck? Uh, have less shivers. Let's rub some of my oil all over my body before it becomes a nervous wreck. Yeah. Oh, oi, oi. This feels good. Uh, oh, the lie. Excuses my ninja. My eyes, my eyes. Your eyes? If you're trouble with your eyes, you need this. Allow a of sandalwood. Isn't this just the leftovers of what you were just using? <laughs> I don't think I have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? No, no, you're right, Monsieur, but perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, no? That way, you can give me... I can give you my undivided attention to cook for you, that is supreme. Clean a brave face, huh? Let's go, Stunic. But you're right. It is very difficult these days. Perhaps the name is a problem. People do not understand it. They think it's they think it's the Ray. Just as one of the people think that my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays. If that's the kind of thing that can be, can make a girl cry. I forgot that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya. But this restaurant is my life. This is everything to me. I will defend it to final final then. No one will take it from me. So who was that woman you were just talking to? Ooh la la, you saw that? Oh well, yes, sorry. So who was she? She looks so polite and graceful. Polite? Graceful? She likes raw meat and fires, right? I think about it. Hey Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. Think so? Well then, let's show him that piece of evidence and see what happens. What? Piece of evidence. Quest... Quest... Um... Did you not comprehend? Don't just make something like I'm but a delightful angel with broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't float well when you think about it. Oh, it's a gift harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? 
Wait, what? Must be unsure. If I did not owe them a lot of money, I would have refused. But my hands were tight. Please, what did you agree to help them with? No, no I cannot say. If I tell you that woman, she will slice me up. And eat me with the salad garnish. <laughs> I hope she doesn't mean that he would be and literally be sliced up and served with garnish. I'm going to guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract, am I right? Ah. Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about the woman. The woman who was here earlier, I think it that she's, um... Why has it come to this? The tragedy. Suddenly I find myself so deep in our depth. It's a sign of a bad, bad world we live in, huh? Yeah. I'd say it's more of a sign of a bad culinary skills. The woman who was here, this scary woman. She, the scary woman. She is from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? Oh, tender lender, it is called. What's your name? That, that's hearing it makes me wanna borrow some money. <laughs> Please, you must not borrow from them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? Some of your whole monthly stipend, Maya. <laughs> hey, I get a bit more than that. Thank you very much. So Tender Lender is the loan office you borrowed half a million from her. Huh? I wonder if they've got a big if they've got anything to do with this case. I'm a weak woman. When I am upset I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Next time loaning me la money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. I'm like his slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. And who's this he? The tiger. The tiger? Oh, yeah. He is a manager of the Netherlands. A terrifying man. A big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of the battered old scooter he rides, I start to cry. A big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter? Does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh no no no. This man has a presence, a most formidable personality. Although... Oh yeah, he does have the spaghetti hair just like you. Oh yeah, so there is a resemblance there, I suppose. Hmm. Looks like this loan of this for checking out of trouble. If you want to visit the dinner under, it's just beyond Vitamin Square. Hey Nick. If you need money, I can loan you some. As long as it's less than three dollars. Thanks for the offer. Spin the square, huh? I was supposed to do this as well. I guess. This guy was a real programmer, a genius. I called him to walk in computer at the place where he worked. What happens when he crashes though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? He wasn't literally a computer, Maya. <laughs> anyway, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday too. You do think I'm sure? Don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? Fun? I, uh. Oh, I know. So have you paid a visit to Mr. where Mr. A worked yet? You might as well. His workplace? Where's that? Computer firm called Blue Screen Sync or something like that. Sounds like a real stable company. This could be fun, Nick. Let's go. Computer sounds really my thing, man. Yeah? We'll be fine. I know all about that high tech stuff. I wonder about that. Let's turn the corner from this joint. You should take a look. A computer firm called Blue Screen Sync. Huh? Well, I'm gonna head back to the breathing. Huh? We have a big meeting starting in a bit. What well, Maggie's case, you mean? Oh, that's pretty much wrapped up now. There's another big case going down at the moment, so she's been pushed aside. Okay, well, see you later then. Bye. Okay. Wait, what? You better get going, detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I, uh. I have a favor to ask. It's a big one. A favor? Yeah, it's for um, Maggie actually. I was kind of hoping. 
you give this to her for me. What is it? It's a lunchbox. I got up early so I could make it. I've been real worried about her. She looked like she'd lost a lot of weight. Death he comes true. How many weenies are in here? There's not a person on earth who could dump this much meat. You think? I love weenies. I can make enough of their tender juiciness. So will you give it to her? It took me ages to make, so please say you will, pal. I can't say so not. Say no, can I? Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay. I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. It's finally gone. Can we go give it already? Nope. Wow, this place is so high tech. You can almost smell the electricity in the air. It's a computer firm, Maya. They can't work without electricity, you know? Who are you? Oh. Um, hello. I'm sorry. Access is restricted to authorized personnel only. It's a computer programming laboratory. There are two main trade secrets that could be leaked. Oh, what secrets? <laughs> Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. This woman. It's like a robot from some kind of whacked edumacation edu also. My name is Lisa Basil. I'm the company director. The director? He's human? He seems more like a ghost in a shell. <laughs> nice. That's nice. Nice. <laughs> and the thing over her eye. Isn't it the same thing? Devices when eggs, elks. Is it, that's a DMAs, right? That's right, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's an HMD. All of my programmers here at Blue Screens Inc. are supplied with HMDs. And do you write programs too? No. I just enjoy wearing these. <laughs> they are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. <laughs> Gosh. Whoops. Hey, look, Nick. It's a supercomputer. Looks like it's really smart and wise, doesn't it? Looks not only as smart as the humans who use them, Maya. That explains why we don't use the computer in our office. You worked there too, Maya. <laughs> yeah, but at least I'm... Please, don't argue about something that's so trivial. Otherwise, that computer will laugh at me. He said she'd laugh at us, Nick. She's a human, Maya, not a computer. <laughs> He's really pounding the keyboard, isn't he? Wow, I bet that's where the pro in the programmer comes from, huh? As I shouldn't be resting on my laurels. They expect uh, my skills set and all that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I could become all C's apprentice. Um, what about our <laughs> sphere medium training? <laughs> oh, look at this testing. What a mess. Looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? Real whiskeys can work under any condition, you know. It's starting to hint that I should try my tidy my desk more. <laughs> I clean up my desk when my stops asking silly questions. No very attention. Hey. It's calendar. What about it? If this is another hint about tidying, you can if this is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. Someone's marked December third in red pen. December third. It's the Mr. L was murdered. Is there anything else? Yeah, um, it says meet with the tiger. The tiger? I see. Wow, look at this mess. Looks like they're all bit petting tickets. What kind of petting tickets? <coughs> Depending on which horse will win a given race. Their horse racing tickets. Oh wow, these drawers are stuffed full of these. Looks like they're all hosing, losing tickets though. This many tickets would get you what? A buck down at the recycling center? I didn't know you were so hard after that you tried to profit from the death, Nick. Just taking them as evidence, Maya. <laughs> <sighs> uh. 
So, what exactly is this firm, firm's business? I'll try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of the industry. We then deliver optimum operating systems and, and source of the components to them. Ah, huh? you lost me at the corner on, of analyze and management. Doesn't matter, they analyze stuff. You got the mods, right? The software we produce should be edited on CDs. CDs? Yes, compact disc, digital optical storage media. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as music. It's a small firm, but all of my employees are first class programmers. Let's ask one of them what they are doing. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I'm resetting the impact of time slicing common error. Multiple errors heard. We have problem trying to have influence. Well, you get the idea. This is the sort of thing we are involved in. Pretty good, good people follow all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Your blanks wants to say otherwise, Maya. You know about what happened, right, Mr. Miss Basil? I mean, about Glenn being poisoned. Yes, I know, it's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. The poison officer was here earlier, too. But I couldn't tell him anything either because. The waitress who committed the crime has something to do with blue screen sync. Oh. How about Mr. Elk's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. This is what I. Uh -huh. Anything that might be useful to you, you're welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. That is a super administrative test that makes his password protected. <laughs> this is madness. Oh my, that's Sparta. She won't. Uh, she won't <laughs> tell us unless we say the right, right code word. Good word. Code word. Mm -hmm. a <laughs> Don't say something, it must be her mother's maiden name. That's how it always is. There's no point in having a password if you told me the same thing, Maya. I guess he just doesn't want to talk about this. We should focus on asking about Glenn Elk. What do you say? Perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. That's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. Really no trouble at all. What an employee. Wait a minute. So you said something about him being in trouble. Find out what this trouble was exactly. I'm about Mr. Elk. Was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry, would you, why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. You said he got himself in trouble because he was a bit of a loser. Thought so. Free Cyclops. <laughs> I guess Mr. L gives like every other man with his own pile of secrets.
Hmm, I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? We meant to buy another ton of birdseeds. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway, at least not for now. Besides, so any more seeds today and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. <sighs> hey, check this out. I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you. Otherwise you might be in for a shock. A phony must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine, a tiger loose in the city. Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a fast urban jungle. Huh? Don't worry. Someday you'll grow up and become the fiercest tiger too. Don't lose hope. Why is she trying to pep talk me into becoming my phone? <laughs> this place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger is in his lair. It is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome. <coughs> Oh, the creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. No, this one. You're here. Because of the <laughs> No, not exactly. Manito is away at the moment. Be quietly, please. She's gone. Just like that. I suppose I'll have to get, come back another time. It's a perfect opinion, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick. Let's take a look around, okay? Do you think it'd be okay? Of course. No one will ever know. Coffee? Ah! I'll leave it here for you to enjoy quietly. Yes, thank you. Don't touch the disc. Please. Nick, let's get out of here. Now she wants to get out of here. <laughs> What's this? It's one to bike. What? No way. You wouldn't catch me walking around with a bag like that. What do you mean walking around? The design scrolls to start with, and it's way too heavy to be practical. And why is it called punching bag? Some people know passenger bags in the rain. I knew it, I was right before back to Trivia. Paris fashion is more my thing. I really, really hope she's pulling my chain on this one. <laughs> True compromise. I wonder what that's supposed to mean. It must mean something if they took the trouble to frame like that. Yeah, well, it still doesn't make any sense to me. That... Ah. It's Tender Lander's guide guiding principle. Oh. Compromise the customer to win. <laughs> oh, I see. How about you, Nick? Yeah, um, well, as long as we don't have to compromise my hair, I'd say we're okay. <laughs> Sounds like no business owner should ever explain to their customers. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh man. Oh wait, well, I didn't mean to do that. CD player on the desk, but the desk is so loud, it's a wonder you can hear it. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. We finished. Coffee. <laughs> yes, thanks. It was lovely. So, you drank it all? Hehehe. <laughs> <coughs> Do you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you? There's always not a cup. <laughs> it's coffee! It was laced with something! I'm almost sure of it! Nick, my stomach! It's killing me! Oh, wait. Maybe it was just a bur burger I ate for breakfast. I sure hope so. We better take a look at the CD while we're still alive and have a chance. What the? What? It's not the Rock of Soundtrack, is it? Close the Tiger. It's... It's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc in pen. MC Bomber. What? It must be the CD Maggie told us about. This isn't it. I bet it's heavy metal. 
Oh wait, that one will make us drink more coffee if we do that. Oh, man. That's one impressive desk on oh, no, one impressive rug. Inside gold, Nick. Gold. Just look at that shine. Only real gold shines like that. Would we really want such a shiny desk though? I don't know, but let's see what it's like to sit at the solid gold desk. Wow, I'm completely dazzled. It's because it's completely dazzling. I see of my not seeing the reflection. That's gotta be really distracting. This isn't practical, no surprise there. Oh no, someone dropped the ashtray on the floor. It's going to be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I accidentally knocked over a really big spa space heater once, picking up a such pain. It's one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. Why did she manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be super heavy? <laughs> oh hey, there's a book of mat matches here too. Matches, huh? Please just don't give those up once nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Oh, what's printed on its cover? It says, try beyond. Matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah, the pilot light for the office border keeps going out. <laughs> swing and a miss. Oh, yeah, swing and a miss. Let's see. This rock doll thing is called the Daruma, I think. I figured I'd read a book or two to be more cultured in case you're wondering. I mean, you aren't making stuff up for a change? Heh, <laughs> I bet you also didn't know you. No matter what. He'll always write himself. Go on, Nick. Give him a good shout. Only I feel like dying. <laughs> Only if I feel like dying. Now this yellow thing. This is Japanese. Just me. I think it's a king. Now that I'm an expert on our... Not that I'm an expert on anything. I'm, I'm more of a reverse person, you know? Assuming she knows what she's talking about. These aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Uh, hey. There's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. Was it a repair bro? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Does he even have one? Doesn't order to replace a bumper and a light? That's insane. Cars resistant to to Cadaveri ca to Cadaverinis. Huh? So it's not even the tiger's car? Why would someone else rep someone else's repair will be in the tiger's office? Hey, look at this person style code. It's so chic. Looks more like a pimp code to me, because I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. So it's the same color as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm, the same color as my suit. Ah! Give her voice on my Nick, you've got to take a look at this. Some cake? Ah! I'll just leave it here for you. Uh, yeah, sure. I am. Um, thanks. Let's wait here quietly. Otherwise, Sh sure. Do you hear that, Wait quietly, she said. <laughs> yeah, sure. I have my eye on you, so I can take care of you. Understand? <laughs> you just <see> creepy. <laughs> uh, I'm scared, Nick. <laughs> So, what were you getting so excited about before? Look, on the label, uh, label of this suit. That's... An, uh, that's an attorney's badge. It's a, ti it's a tiger lawyer. Oh, well, look at this thing, it's made of paper. For some reason, your bat selling looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why doesn't anyone recognize an obviously fake bat when they see one? <laughs> How long are you gonna shout? Ar. Ah. I want from under this Maya. Why are you just two snooping around in my office for? Nothing. We were just. Press <laughs> carpet. It's gonna ash on my rug. You're gonna wish your ugly feet never came through my door. It wasn't us. You just wanna argue with me? He said what you do. You do. You think you can take me on? I'm gonna flatten you soon into pancake and turn you into my new rugs. 
Ah. Uh, oh. Don Tiger, you're back. I get that voice. It's like evil sleeping in your head through your ears. I'm sorry, Don Tiger. I looked over that ashray earlier, and. It, has she got a death wish or what? Alright. Forget about it, Violet. It's nothing. But but what? <laughs> I'm gonna get mad at you. You too. You too cute. You hear? It's so unfair. Here, have some cookies. Let's bake them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Ah, Phoenix right. Yes. You, you see the crazy or just plain stupid to chase after me. <laughs> I worked so hard, but now you just got to come and mess up my plan. So it was him. He's my phony. But I don't care, no one gets in my way. What? I mean, excuse me? <laughs> you should have left the little girl at home, right? Um, I have a few things up. <sighs> no questions. This is the last time we meet. Okay. Uh, wait. P please. <laughs> that was pretty weak, Nick. You waited until he was out of your shots before you shouted after him. <laughs> like your mother dog. I didn't hear you scream. Hold it. Either. <laughs> Special. Ah. And cookies. Somebody's definitely not good for my heart. <laughs> now, what was it the tiger called her? Violetta? So I'm kind of curious about your company, and Orlando. With the warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family-sized business, a consensus rate of interest, and an att attractive repayment policy. Why do I get the feeling this sentence is not going to end well? <laughs> we will tenderly lend you that little bit extra. Here, Ted Orlando. Nick, things are a bit tight for writing code at the moment, aren't they? I mean, there's that $500 you owe me from your card game for starters. Why don't you take out a loan? <laughs> Would I like to take out a loan from a place like this? Not so much. Tenderlander is on your side. Key. Key. So, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? We give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Um, right. I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just remember I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. I think that strong coffee would be the poisoned coffee that... Okay, so, yeah. I think I got it now, for some, some part of it at least. So basically, probably... Um, Glenn had a loan from them and then got poisoned by them because of not repaying or something, maybe. So um, do you know about the incident we're investigating? Incident. Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here. The incident. Let me see. I was here at the the manager. The manager being the tiger. Bring a tiger. For you. Tiger. That's where the tiger thing comes from. Listen, help. Got a real name. We hurry up and find out more about him. Can I ask you about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tiger. Okay. Sure. How do you like my cookies? I baked them myself. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. The honor is all yours. No, no. Ladies first, Maya. He, he, he. No matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are tigers and this scary girl doing working together? We are lovers. This is coming across in your tone of voice. And I'll oh, ton, ton Tiger my life. One who saved me. Tiger saved you? Please, ad address him pro properly as Don Tiger, otherwise I'll have to. Okay, okay, Don Tiger, of course, I'm sorry. He saved your life. I'd sure like to know how that happened. Very frail, you see. Just recently I died once. You died? About four months ago, 
doctor said to abandon all hope. As they were expecting to take a boat ride across the river Styx. Don't I go? Save me. Gave up everything. Everything? When I found out what he had, uh, had done for me, I was happy. No offense, but I'm finding it a little hard to believe. I decided that I'd, I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and espresso. I still wonder about what's in her coffee. <laughs> so, is that why you got that bandits around your head? He. he is? I'm um, so, what's the story with the bandage? They put it on after the operation. Operation? It's a little injury. A little fatal injury. He. he. A fatal injury? Why is it so hard to her so fast out of it? So, what that's the injury we were talking about before when you said you had, had died once. Oh, of course. Great. <sighs> she really creeped me out, Nick. I'm here, but we've got to find out the truth. Can I do this yet? is back feeding the pieces again. There, take this, and this, and get out of my front. Fuck. I thought he's really mad. Come on, Maya. Just keep your head down and let's sneak away while we still can. What? Why? Hello, old man. What are you doing, Maya? Huh? <laughs> hey, he just turned his back on us. I'm surprised. I bet I really heard his pride in the court this morning. Hey, Mr. Kudo. Hmm, ha, hmm, 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 beep, 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 chan, hmm, ka. Look, we really need to talk to you, alright? Help with the demons. I'm... I'm... I'm good fortune. Ah, uh, ah, uh, see, it's still splinters. Painful. I always knew you were a demon, Maya. Okay, and this is where I'll call it for today. Oh, wait. 